Hello, Pelicans. We are at June 2024 Orlando Informers Meetup at Universal Parks in Orlando, Florida. And it's going to be a hot one. Why don't you come along with us while we take a look and answer the question, do they got parking? Is it worth it? Are there really no crowds? And is the food just never ending and free? I'm just gonna get it out of the way right up front. Absolutely, the only way I think I would ever do these Universal Parks is with Orlando Informer. They were amazing, and everything that Orlando Informer handled was just wonderful and perfect. The only things I didn't love were the parts where Universal employees had to handle, such as checking us in. It's been about an hour and a half of our time. I mean, to get from registration, then there was a massive line because the bottleneck was where the tickets were being presented while Universal allowed people into the park between three and five o'clock. So we arrived by tips that we had heard on the internet through YouTube that it was a walk-in and there was very little crowd at 4.45 p.m. Uh, we did not find this to be the case, but like I said, Orlando Informer side, we breezed right through. As you can see, this crowd looks like it's very big, but uh, we walked right in. They processed everybody so quickly. There were nice cold drinks. It was air conditioned. And then we sat on the sideline and uh, waited. We made it to Orlando Informer. Went up to the line now pretty fast, five minutes, not even. Took longer to walk here. We did switch and instead of going into the Universal Park, Universal Studio Park, we went and turned around and went into Islands of Adventure. That line was much shorter. We got into the park, walked through Mythos, or Mythic, and ended up at Hogsmeade. From there, our original plan was to eat at the Leaky Cauldron and go to Diagon Alley. Instead, we switched up, went to Three Broomsticks, and we waited until 7 o'clock when the park started to close. By 7.35, crowds started to thin. It never got to the point where it was empty, I'm sure if we waited until 12.15 at night, it might have happened. However, every single ride, with the exception of Hagrid, the whole night was a walk-on. We rode everything else that we wanted to. Um, Jurassic Park, Harry Potter, both sides. We took the train both ways. Orlando Informer is legit. It was a bit of a no suit. rough beginning for Orlando Informer. It's 5.35. We started... We started at 3... 3.30. At 3.30. So 3.30 to 5.30 before we got to... Uh, Wizard and World of Harry Potter, but now we're here. And just a quick observation based on other hints and clues we, that we tested out. So we did walk from Cabana Bay over to um, take the water taxi from Sapphire Falls. We did find that it took about four or five boats. So there was a line there. It did take a bit. It was a little hot. 
but I still wouldn't adjust. If I had one tip I would add, it would be instead of walking over to Sapphire Falls, I would have went to Port Royal and walked there and caught the water taxi from there because from what we heard, there was a lot less of a line. Anyway, we were super excited to have been invited. Orlando and Former were awesome hosts. And I would do this again, and I think it would be my chosen way of experiencing the Universal theme parks in Orlando, Florida. I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit from the Hogshead Tavern and the Three Broomsticks, some of the food we got. Till next time, like, subscribe, Pelican Pod Travel Vlog, and join us on Patreon for free. Love to have you. Thank you.